Welcome. Tonight we embark on a special journey, the journey to Bethlehem. We are not the first to take this journey. The trip has been made by rich kings and lowly shepherds, and even the angels in heaven. And we too have been invited to make this journey. At the end of it, we will meet our Savior, Jesus, the newborn King. Even before that first Christmas, God was preparing the hearts of his people for the coming Messiah. He spoke through prophets like Isaiah to spread the word of the one who was to come. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and rightness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Hello, Father. How are you, Joseph? 
Joseph? Good, thanks. How's Mom? Oh, she's okay. Business going well? It's good. Hmm. I see you're still making the chair joints your way. It works better my way, Dad. No, it's a, it's a cheap shortcut. You're just trying to avoid splinters. That's why it works better, Dad. No splinters. <laughs> okay, as long as people aren't crashing to the floor, who cares, right? What's that? This? Just something for a friend. May I see it? Sure. Ah, uh, you're building a crib. Yes, I am. For a friend? Joseph, you know why I'm here. There are whispers in town. Lots of rumors are going around about Mary. I know that, Dad. I wish you'd reconsider this marriage. But I can't. Joseph, this is an embarrassment. For who? Dad? Me? Or you and Mom? There's no reason to fight about this. If you're worried about her life, she won't be harmed. We made sure of that. Dad, I'm going to marry her. I'm going to raise that baby with her. Don't be a fool, Joseph. Do you really believe that the child she is carrying is the Son of God? Yes, I do. How do you know? Because the angel came to see me too. And I can't leave her because this is what God wants. Joseph, think of yourself for a moment. This is not your mess. Don't throw your life away. Oh, yeah? What if Abraham thought like you, Dad? What if he refused to believe God would make his family into a nation? What if Ruth returned to Moab and never came to Israel? What if David let fear keep from him while fighting Goliath? I don't know why God chose me for this, but I have faith that he will take care of us. Mary, the baby, and me. Your mother will be disappointed. What should I tell her? Tell her that I'm following the Lord, just as you taught me. <laughs> oh, you certainly are.
God spoke into the hearts of the prophets to deliver his message of the Messiah to the world. Now it was time for God to speak to those who would be taking the journey to Bethlehem for themselves. God spoke through an angel to a young virgin named Mary, delivering the exhilarating and overwhelming message that she would give birth to God's own son. She accepted the assignment with humility. She praised God. When her fiancé heard the news that Mary would have a baby, he had quite a different reaction. Joseph was a simple carpenter, and he did not understand what was happening. Whatever journey Mary was now on, he did not intend to be part of it. But God had something different in mind. It was his purpose that his own son, Jesus, would have an earthly father to care for and raise him. He had chosen Joseph to be that father and to make that journey to Bethlehem with Mary. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. After he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph spoke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This story reminds us that the journey to Jerusalem requires faith. God calls us to put faith in him, even when it doesn't make sense. God has a plan for our steps. Sometimes he gives us the whole picture, but often we can only see the next step in front of us. But when we move forward in faith, we find that God has already been there preparing things for us. Now we'll meet a few of the people who made that journey to Bethlehem so many years ago. For them, the journey was a long one and required preparation. Let's take a look. Okay guys, I think we're ready to roll. Let's go over our checklist one more time. Luggage? Check. Check. Travel games? Check. Check. Camel feet. Check. Water for camels. Check. Cooler with an endless supply of root beer. Checkeroni. Gifts for the newborn king. Check. Checkerski. You guys think it's done to be crowded? Well, I'm sure we'll run into some traffic around Jerusalem. Oh, I sure we will. What about where the baby is? Yeah, I'm sure it will be crowded. After all, this is the Messiah, the King of Kings. I'll bet everyone in Israel is trying to get a look at it. But if they're not, what if they're not interested? What if they don't know if he's been born? Impossible! They had to see a star. How could you miss it? I don't know. Baby, I'm being silly. I sure hope so. It would be a shame. These people wait so many years to miss it. I know I'm not going to miss it. Let's keep moving, guys. Not to worry, Jim. This is God's Messiah, and God will make sure the people know he has come. I hope so. I hate for anyone to miss him. That's the spirit. Come on, guys. Let's get going. It's going to be a long trip to Israel. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and 
teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. to meet the newborn king. They had to travel many miles on their way to Bethlehem, but they never lost sight of the reason for their journey. God had placed a new star in the sky to guide the Magi. It went before them, showing them the way if they had turned to the right or to the left. They would have missed the opportunity to meet the baby Jesus. If they had gotten tired and turned back, 
they also would have missed the blessing. But with their eyes fixed on the sky, they were reminded of what awaited them. All of the hot days and long nights, the sore backs and uncomfortable beds would be worth it in the end because in the end they would see and know Jesus. We too must remember what Christmas is really about. Our heads can be turned by the shiny ornaments and the stockings on the mantle and the presents under the tree. These things are great, but we mustn't let them distract us from the true meaning of Christmas. God's Son come to earth born as a baby in a manger. It's the true meaning of Christmas. It's as true today as it was for the Magi, and as true as it was for the animals in the stable waiting to greet the newborn king. When's the innkeeper going to feed us? I'm starving. Pipe down over there. All I need is him trying to milk me after the day he's had. He's all out of patience. And both of you put the moaning? Easy doesn't look like you. Tomorrow's blue play special. Who really cares what you guys think? Life is good. Eat their sleep. What they like. Hey guys, we've got company. Who is it? It's a man and a woman on a donkey. No way, no way, I'm sharing my head. Hush, what can you see? They went to the door of the inn and got turned away. Wait, the innkeeper is leading them this way. Red alert! Let's keep the talking to a minimum. Not a bad idea. Suits me. Look out, here they come. My goodness, that girl is huge. I wonder what her problem is. Be quiet and we'll find out. Well, I'll be. What? Yeah, Gertie, what? She's going to have a baby. Can't have a baby here, but it's be right. I can't believe it. Are you sure? What else are you saying? They have come a long ways. Something about a sentence. Oh my. What? 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 You heard me. She's having the baby. All right, team, let's pinch him, Brutus, let's sacrifice some straw. Okay, but I don't have much. It will be enough. Beatrice, why don't you move close to the mother and let her rest on you? You bet, Gertie. Auntie Ned? Yeah? Don't chew on anything. Okay. Sarah, you keep watch. Will do. My word, what's going on? I don't know, but I think something big is happening. I'd say you're right. There's a huge star in the sky, and the light leads down to here. Oh my! He is beautiful! Thank goodness! Hate for him to be ugly. Oh my word. I think we've just witnessed it something. Something is right. I can't believe my eyes. We're going to tell all the other animals about this. Wow. Who knows? They may write a song about this. We can be remembered forever. We can become things of our legends become. We could become supper. Auntie Ned! Sorry. Tonight has been a special <laughs> night. One I know people will be hearing about for generations.
was no soft bed. There was only a borrowed food trough and a borrowed stable. It was dirty, noisy, and no place for a baby, let alone the Son of God. But even in that humble setting, it was clear that Jesus was no ordinary baby. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Imagine the creator of the universe, the Son of God who reigns in heaven, sleeping on a bed of hay. That's how Jesus entered the world, not as a conquering hero, but as the poor son of a carpenter. What an extraordinary beginning to a world-changing story. It sure is quiet tonight. 
Yeah. But you said the mind plays tricks. Tricks, I say, tricks! Yeah. So if I said I saw an angel, would that count as a trick? Oh, yeah, why? Once I knew this fella named Roy. Thought he saw an angel light over the old pasture and promised him a million dollars. He quit shepherding and ended up a poor man. Poorer than any shepherd. Angels are nothing but illusions. Right, Tex? No! No? What do you mean, no? Greetings! Ah! Are you sure this is a trick? I don't know, Junior! Do not be afraid, but I bring you good news, which will be for all people today. This in the city of David, the Savior is born. He's Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. That was real, right? Yep. You saw the angel, right? Yep. What do we do? What else? Let's just go see this thing the Lord has told us about. You coming? Yeah! But why tell us? Bird has a bunch of shepherds. Lonely, poor shepherds. Lonely, poor, uneducated, bad smelling, bad table manners. Hey, 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 speak for yourself there, partner. What do we do now? I'll tell you what we do. We go see this thing the good Lord decided to tell us about. Yeehaw, let's go! Well, the story of the Magi reminds us that even the wise and learned recognized how special Jesus was. The true essence of the Christmas story is that you don't have to be special to make the journey to Bethlehem. You just have to be willing. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
miles to get to Bethlehem, some came from just around the corner. As the angels told the shepherds, the message of the Messiah is for everyone. Rich, poor, young, old, man, woman, Jew, Gentile. Jesus is God's love in the flesh, and his love knows no bounds, no limits, no categories. It doesn't matter who you are or where you've been, you can come to Bethlehem too and meet the newborn king. But be ready, the journey doesn't end at Bethlehem. Jesus' journey, and the journey of those who follow him, is just the beginning. So here we are at last. Father and Son. Seems so strange to be in this position. If you are who everyone says you are, it should be you holding me, not me holding you. I don't know why you chose me to be the one to father you. I can only imagine how much more I will learn from you than you will ever learn from me. Is it all true what they say about you? The Magi say you're the one the Isaiah spoke of, the wonderful counselor the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Mary said, your name is Jesus, the Deliverer, and you come to save our people. The shepherds said, you came not just for the Jews, but the whole world. Then there were the others, Simeon and Anna. They've been waiting a long time to see you. They've praised your Father, our Heavenly Father, for letting them see you. Then they spoke of terrible things. People will rise and fall because of you. Tragedy will come, and your mother will suffer because of you. How can all this be? If you're really the mighty God and the Prince of Peace, how can you also be the bringer of so much turmoil? I'm sorry, it's not fair to ask you all this. Tonight, you're completely dependent on us. Just a baby who needs sleep. Rest well, my son. I'm sure these things will come clear in time. I still wish someone would tell me why I was chosen to be your dad. I may come from a line of David, but there are many in Israel who can say the same. I'm no one special. I'm just a carpenter. You could have so much an easier life with someone else. Something tells me you didn't come here to live the easy life. I don't know what lies ahead for you, but I know this. I'm grateful you're finally here.
Jesus was still a baby, Mary and Joseph took him to Jerusalem to be dedicated in accordance with Jewish tradition and law. When they arrived, they discovered two people who had been eagerly awaiting his arrival. The arrival of the Messiah. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna. She was very old and lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Both Simeon and Anna realized that Jesus was the Messiah that God had promised way back when he spoke through Isaiah and the other prophets. It had been a long time waiting, but God never forgot his people. He loved them and was faithful to send them his son. God's love knows no bounds. Simeon said that God's salvation would be for all nations and called Jesus a light to the Gentiles. Jesus did not just come for some. He did not offer his love to only a select few. Jesus came for all people. And his journey does begin and end in Bethlehem. Simeon and Anne spoke of the redemption that was to come. Jesus would not stay a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. He would grow and become strong, filled with wisdom and the grace of God. He would become a man and travel the countryside telling people the good news that God loves them. That love would eventually send Jesus to the cross to die for us. After three days, Jesus was raised to life again. The redemption that Anna and Simeon spoke of was finally completely forever fulfilled in Jesus Christ. This is the journey that God calls each of us on, the journey that leads us to salvation, to redemption, to love, to Jesus. Once we get on this road, we will never be the same again. And it all started with that journey to Bethlehem.
I hope you enjoy the show. And I just wanted to, uh, at this time, wanted to thank you for all the volunteers, uh, Ashley, Heather, for the recording, and also Tammy for guiding up all the kids, and also Peggy for calling up and setting up appointments. I thank you so much for without your help, uh, this was not possible. And also thank you for all the families who chose to be a part of this program. I thank you for parents who drove the children to the church so we, uh, we can do the reporting. Thank you for your time and commitment to this program. I just wanted to uh, remind all of you that on Christmas Eve, there will be an online streaming Christmas Eve service. It's happening live at 5 o'clock, both at Facebook, uh, Greenwood's Facebook page, as well as uh, our YouTube page. So I hope you will join and perhaps that the, your family can work, watch and worship together. So I wish you a very Merry Christmas and uh, may you find peace during this challenging year that we have gone through. Have a good night. Bye.